My uh, rant today, my daily take from uh, HartmanReport.com is titled, The Noble Lie Lives On in Crisis Pregnancy Centers as They Rake in Millions. Plato was the guy who founded this term, noble lie. This was uh, 2,300 years ago. Um, his noble lie had to do with the, uh, the foundation and the philosophy of the city-state. You know, in other words, it was a, a mythology that that uh, it would benefit, the, you know, that would be told to people for their own good and for the benefit of the state. Well, I, I would say the noble lie lives on uh, in these crisis pregnancy centers. These are places that do not offer abortion services. They do not offer contraception. They do not offer screening for sexually transmitted diseases. Uh, they basically just exist to try to talk women out of getting abortions. Um, I, I plugged this into uh, Neva.com. I think I've told you about this. This is a new search engine that I'm using pretty much exclusively now. They've got a great little app, uh, iPhone app, they've, uh, you know, which also works as a browser. Um, they, you can you know, install it in your other browsers. And, and they've got an AI, you know, artificial intelligence-driven search engine. So you plug, plug a phrase into Neva and their little e e AI thing, just like chat G CPT, GPT, uh, you know, gives you an AI response, and then below that you get all the links. And so I plugged in crisis pregnancy centers into Neva.com, and this is what it said, quote, crisis pregnancy centers, CPCs, are anti-abortion clinics with a hidden agenda and part of an industry built on misleading pregnant people with scare tactics and lies. They are designed to look like real health centers, but their goal is to scare, shame, or pressure people out of getting an abortion and to spread lies about abortion, birth control, and sexual health. CPCs are dangerous, predatory organizations that are risk to public health, end quote. I couldn't have said it better. Uh, that said, they and their affiliated groups hauled in about $4 billion last year. Um, uh, we have uh, one-fifth of our states now are funding these groups to the tune of big bucks. Texas, for example, has given them $100 million a year for the last two years. Bill Lee, the uh, governor of uh, Tennessee, uh, in his uh, State of the State address, uh, this was, I think, on Tuesday of this week, um, he, he said that the state you know, of Tennessee should be giving $100 million to the crisis pregnancy centers in that state. Um, a database compiled by Repo Action found that there are over 2,600 of these nationwide. There's far more than there are, you know, abortion providers or even, even uh, Planned Parenthood offices. Elizabeth, Olivia Raisner uh, is an investigative reporter for May Day, and she, she uh, for an article that was published three months ago in Ms. Magazine, um, she went to an Indianapolis, actually she went to five of them, Indianapolis uh, uh, crisis CPCs, and, uh, you know, brought along a, a bottle of urine from a friend of hers who was pregnant so that her pregnancy test would be positive, you know, to see what they had to say to her. And she said that the first noble lie that they told her, she didn't use the word noble lie, it's my phrase, but uh, it's Plato's phrase really, but was that, quote, girls that get abortions end up with high suicide rates. It's not true. <laughs> not even remotely true. Uh, in fact, if anything, the opposite is true. She also was told that if she gets an abortion and then later has a child, quote, she won't be able to fully love him because I'll always be reminded that I took away his brother or sister, end quote. That lie was followed by a series of lies uh, that abortion will scar her fallopian tubes. That's a, that's a lie. That she'd risk bulimia. That's a lie. That she'd risk anorexia. That's a lie. That she would become infertile. That's a lie. Um, uh, researchers, in fact, at the University of California, San Francisco, did a 10-year, 1,000-patient study of women who got abortions and women who were turned away from getting abortions for a whole variety of reasons. And, uh, it, in fact, it was published as a book last, uh, the year before last. It was titled The Turnaway Study, 10 Years, 1,000 Women, and the Consequences of Having or Being Denied an Abortion. And the findings are really sobering. What they found was that women who were unwillingly forced to carry their pregnancies to term were, and these are all direct quotes, more likely to experience serious complications from the end of pregnancy, including eclampsia and death, more likely to stay tethered to abusive partners, more likely to suffer anxiety and loss of self-esteem in the short term after being denied abortion, less likely to have aspirational life plans for the coming year, and more likely to experience poor physical health for years after the pregnancy, including chronic pain and gestational hypertension. They also determined 
that being denied an abortion has serious implications for the child born of an unwanted pregnancy as well as for the existing children in the family. And they found, supporting previous research, that women denied abortions were four times more likely to end up living below the federal poverty line. On the other hand, women who had an abortion are not more likely than those denied the procedure to have depression, anxiety, or suicidal ideation. We find, this is from their study, that 95% of women report that having the abortion was the right decision for them five years after the procedure. Pro-Choice North Carolina compiled a list of the top 10 noble lies that CPCs in North Carolina were telling women. They were, uh, number one, lie number one, abortion causes breast cancer. Lie number two, you'll never have children if you have number three, condoms don't work. Lie number four, the abortion pill is dangerous. Uh, lie number five, birth control and emergency contraception cause abortions. Lie number six, abortions causes permanent psychological and mental, medical, medical da uh, mental damage. Lie number seven, abortions cost more than having a baby. Uh, lie number eight, surgical abortion can kill you. Lie number nine, you have plenty of time to make a decision. One third of all pregnancies end in miscarriage anyway. Let's just take it easy, come back in a month. And of course, this is all designed to push women out to the point where they no longer can get an abortion. And lie number 10, your baby can already smell and hear you. All, all of these are lies. Um, at least, you know, early enough in a pregnancy to have an abortion. And the CPCs are growing increasingly sophisticated in their targeting women. This is, uh, Kylie Chung wrote for uh, Jezebel, quote, anti-abortion groups are already taking advantage of digital platforms to spy on people from funding and partnering with fertility apps that track people's periods to reportedly using mobile geofencing technology to bombard patients at or en route to abortion clinics with targeted anti-abortion propaganda ads. And then, you know, earlier this week, just the, this is what got me thinking about this and, and prompted me to write this op-ed. Um, just Tuesday of this week, tech, uh, two days ago, Tech Ta Transparency Project broke the news that Google, in an apparent violation of their own terms of service, has been sending as many as 56% of women who Google, I'm looking for an abortion, where is an abortion clinic near me? Send them to crisis pregnancy centers instead. A typical ad from these CPCs that was uh, published in The Guardian uh, yesterday, um, showed the ad said, free abortion help, 100% confidential. Well, no, it's not help to get an abortion. It's uh, help to not get an abortion, right? Also, the investigative reporting website Reveal reported last June, quote, Facebook is collecting ultra-sensitive personal data about abortion seekers and enabling anti-abortion organizations to use that data as a tool to target and influence people in, online in violation of its own policies and promises. And then also, because these organizations don't actually provide medical services, they're not covered by HIPAA. So when women come into these CPCs, they're asked to fill out a form with their entire you know, medical history, their, their sexual history, number of sexual partners they've had, whether they use drugs. None of this stuff is confidential. In fact, these organizations apparently share this stuff with each other. And, you know, it could even be, this is one of the big concerns, this information could be handed off to like bounty hunters in Texas or even police in states that have criminalized leaving the state for an abortion. I mean, this is just incredible. Pregnancy is the only health condition where you can be lied to legally. I mean, if, if you have a broken bone or, and there's nurses working in a lot of these CPCs, if you have a broken bone or you have cancer or hypertension or diabetes and your healthcare pro, you know, practitioner says, oh, don't worry about it. Your bones will heal all by themselves. And oh, cancer, hey, we can cure that with vitamin C. You know, if that happens, you have a lawsuit on your hands and that person could lose their license or even go to jail. But lying about pregnancy Lying about birth control, lying about abortion is perfectly legal in the United States. And like I said, you know, one fifth of all our states, all of them red states, are actually throwing hundreds of billions of dollars at these organizations. Right now, the only defense that American women have against these crisis pregnancy centers is knowledge. And that's why I wrote this op-ed and that's why I'm encouraging you to, to read it at HartmanReport.com and forward it to everybody you know, because this is what we need to inform people of what's going on. It's 18 minutes past the hour. Uh, is God gender neutral? And, <laughs> and uh, also, the GOP is trying to ban science. This is 
pretty breathtaking. I'll tell you about those things right after the break. Stick around. 18 minutes past the hour.